Jesus, I come to you, Lord. Down to your feet. Down to your feet. Here now I come. Here now. Welcome to another amazing episode of The Whole Truth, a Christian TV show that talks about the whole truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and it goes across every area of our life. It features songs by amazing artists, discussions and teachings, and also quotes of the week, amazing packages to go around. And before we dive into the discussion with our guests already seated and ready to run, listen to this song, Old and Grey, written by Victor Pute, sung by Israel Bullis and Esther Lushola. And after that, we'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. And that's a beautiful song, Old and Grey, sung by Israel Bulus and Olushala Boy. It was written by Victor Opote, an amazing song. And right now, I'm diving into the discussion segment. It's, um, it's going to be a swell time, I promise you. I'm talking about kingdom culture, the kingdom culture of love. And uh, I have an amazing guest to discuss about it, how we get to transit from just a love of actions, just actions to actually build in a culture of love. And with me is Reverend, the one and only Reverend Ishaya Inua. It's amazing to have you in the show today. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you, you came. Thank I'm you. glad you came. And I also have Pastor Elsie Adum. You look beautiful, I must say. Thank you. I love the green. I love the green. Thank you. <laughs> okay, to dive into, to make it, um, to dive into the real discussion. And I must say that having both of you here is strategic to the topic, talking about kingdom culture. And we're going to be as deliberately intentional and practical as possible so that every listener out there will know that this is possible because we want to show that there's a kingdom kind of love and it's possible to achieve. And we're going to literally spell it out as much as we can. So I'll start, I'll start by asking you, Reverend Ishaya, um, is really love possible? I, I really want to talk, start by asking if love is possible and how possible it is for the kingdom kind of love. Yeah, so I will say yes, and uh, a strong yes is possible. Okay. Um, love is, uh, God is love. But, uh, love is a shared attribute of God. So all the people he has created are able to demonstrate love because it's a shared attribute of God. Uh, but I must say that love is a difficult concept to define 
um, many translations in English try to define love, but uh, uh, it's a concept that is very, very difficult to um, define, but rather we can explain it. Um, when you define love, you are tempted to reduce it to feeling, emotional feeling or emotional response, but love is beyond that. You can have feelings, you can have emotion, but they have nothing to do with love. So we have to look at God to understand what love is. Oh, right. But before I uh, talk about that, there are th three concepts that we need to unpack. Kingdom, culture of love. Yeah. Now, kingdom suggests that there is a kingdom. Um, so there is a king over it, uh, and there are subjects, and we are the subjects. God is the one who is over this kingdom. There is a way he has willed that things be ordered in this kingdom. So there are ethos, there are uh, modus operandi, things you do, things you don't do in this kingdom. But then we go to culture. What is culture? Culture is a way of life. And um, if there is no culture in this kingdom, there is no way this kingdom can be governed. Because culture is what gives people identity. It um, even uh, suggests what their architecture will look like, how they dress, how they govern themselves. It's culture that gives people that kind of uh, um, uh, values. Or, you know, uh, Culture is explained this way. So you have what is called values, things that are important, things that uh, are your guiding principles that have been communicated within a given uh, society and these uh, values when engaged sufficiently they metamorphose into what is called culture now it's a way of life because over time people are used to these values that it becomes the way they do things and I will add the third component which is a worldview culture when sufficiently engaged over time it becomes a worldview so it becomes the norm the way people live within that given society um, they interpret everything uh, that you tell them within their lenses because worldview gives you a lenses within, with which you interpret your reality. So in other words, you're trying to say that the world has affected our definition of love? Of course, it does. Okay. So you see a person lost in and he calls it love. You see a person having uh, sex out of the way God has prescribed it and he calls it love. You hear people say, if you love me, show me. Do you understand all of these things? I mean, it's just warped that the real understanding of it is not there. And I can even go to... Uh, the, so with this, I will allow you to ask other questions. Yeah. You know, it is possible for people to give and not love. It is po it possible for people to have sex. There is no love involved. And I can take that from First Corinthians 13. Though you have the gift of these, though I give up my body to be burned as a sacrifice, but have no love, no love. Yeah, it tells you that really, you really, uh, you, you it's, can have it's really deep, and yeah, I, I have mean, a lot of thousands of questions coming okay, to my mind. Okay. But I, I really want to get past Elsie's view, especially when we say that women, we are more. You know, our definition of love is totally different from the, the men's <laughs> perspective. But then, drawing from what he has said, that we have really derailed our definition of love has been altered by the systems of the world. Um, is how do we get to come back to that love kind of, the kingdom kind of culture? And is it possible? I really want to really get that. Is this possible? I'd like to speak like Jesus. Hmm. All things are possible to him that believes. Yes, it is possible for us to return. Um, returning means um, you find out what your source is. What are you returning to? Who are you returning to? All right, so returning, returning to the uh, mode and the mold originally that was created by the father uh, that's the mode of love oh. means returning to god returning is like going back to genesis how did it all start who is love what is love for us to now know what we're returning to where did we live off you know um like the prodigal son when he sat down and realized i goofed he came to himself and he said i must return home i will go to my father and i will say to him um just like Rev rightly started and by saying that um, there's a modus operandi, there's a mode in which we've been in this kingdom, we, we are expected to function by. Um, if you do not return to that, you definitely would be in the fallen state, you'd be in the state that is not you. You, you, you you'd be alien to yourself. Yes, it's possible to return. What, it, what you need to do is to find the way home. Jesus speaking said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. I put it in the context of love. I am the way of love. 
I am the truth concerning love. If you want to find out anything about love, it has to be through Christ. And I am the life of love. That's how you return. You return to the one who is, to the one who um, gave the definition in the first place. Without that, um, you're returning to your, maybe, maybe returning back to philosophies of men. Returning to, we, we will find women doing that all the time. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, okay, next time I have this relationship, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this differently. Yeah. <laughs> and you're missing the mark continuously. We're talking about missing the mark. Yes. How, how we associate love to how I feel. If I feel right, I'm in love. If yes. I feel right, I, I'm no longer in love. Mm -hmm. um, how, how can we really now say that um, love is void of how I'm feeling, I'm in the mood, I fall in or I fall out of love, to build the real context of loving without any condition, you know. I, I could do everything for you, I could catch a grenade for you, I could go to the moon and back for you. And that would be a reason because I could get something from you. We, we are bonding in some levels. But what happens when someone doesn't like you? I, I don't feel any connect, you know, my blood did not jam. <laughs> you know that kind of, <laughs> my blood and yours did not jam. And we, we see Christians live that kind of life. So how do we now dissociate from that to come to the real context of, I don't care where you are or what you have, but I love you notwithstanding. Yeah, so, so that's, that is the way God wills love to be. And again, um, you know, that catching a grenade, uh, again, go back to that First Corinthians 13, right? You can catch a grenade and yet not love is as simple as that. Because you can burn your, right. you can offer up your body to mm -hmm. be burned as a sacrifice, but yet have not love. That's what Corinthians tells us. So, and uh, to reduce love to f feeling would mean that uh, love is uh, um, subjective because mm -hmm. feeling is subjective. Yeah. There are times when you don't feel like doing anything. There are times when a person is not deserving to receive tenderly care and affection from you. Yeah. There are times when people don't merit anything from you. Right. But the instruction is to love. Love one another. There are many instructions in the Bible that suggest we love one another. And uh, if we are patterning our lives after Jesus, who is the king over this kingdom, remember a kingdom culture of love, then we must know that he loves irrespective of who we are. In fact, the Bible says, while we were yet seen as Christ died for us, right. what have we done to merit that love? And so, in this kingdom, you've got to love people, you've got to show compassion, you've, uh, you've got to show care, you give, um, you even go the, 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 the length and breadth uh, of your life as given by God to demonstrate love because God wills it. Remember, in this kingdom, there is a way and manner we live and so we cannot recreate it. That's why culture is important. Okay. Uh, we have, I must, I must agree um, with the fact that we have lost this concept of love. So severally, our expression of love is tied to what I can get. Mm -hmm. So if I give you, you give me. If I give you, don't give me, then you don't love me. Yeah. That's what we think. Okay. But it's beyond that. Right. We give sacrificially. That is how God demonstrated his love to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Love is given, and when it gives, it's self-sacrificing. Um, not necessarily expecting something in return, uh, but you give because you love. Okay. And we, we have to see it as... as Pastor Elsie, you have been smiling yeah. all through, so I believe yes, you have something. Is it yes. personal experience I or love something? The fact, yeah, I love what he said. You yeah. know, um, while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Um, in saying love isn't a feeling, all right? Uh, while the person, while your object of love is missing the mark, you go way past that to love them. Now, what are the attributes of love? Love is patient. Love is kind. If you find, you break down the meaning of love from 1 Corinthians 13 and put yourself side by side, because God is love. Born of God means that we are love. Yeah. Okay? Um, when I read uh, 1 John, 1 John 5, right? First John, he says, uh, God is love, and then he begins to tell you because we're born of God. I, what I do is, I, I put myself, when I read First Corinthians 13, I begin to, call, when, where it says, from starting from verse 4, love is patient, love is kind. I begin to go, LC is patient, LC is kind. And when I begin to read certain other characters of love, I'm wondering, ha, ah, okay, we got work to do here. So it's way past feeling. When someone has really offended you, I mean, they, they've taken a jab at your heart in measures you cannot even explain. You don't want to be kind. You want to give, as you're giving it hot, I want to give it back to you hot. Mm -hmm. But because it's not the culture of the kingdom, kingdom says, the culture says, the woes you slap on this side, 
you're showing them the part that isn't hurt. It takes a lot. It takes a whole um, restructuring of your of, of a mindset. It takes a whole acceptance of this is who I am now. The old me is passed away. That one is gone. The one that says, ah, my mama no born fool. That one is not the real person anymore. Mm. If I am, if I have received the life of love, who is Christ? Remember, love is not just a feeling. It, 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 can, it, it can be expressed in a feeling. Necessarily, necessarily, mm. right. love, you, you find feeling. That's right. But feeling itself is not it's love. It's not love. Mm. Necessarily, That's emotions right. is a, an emotional response to things, but love is not um, an emotion. That's it's right. deeper than that. It's de because there right. are times you don't feel it, you don't emotion it if there is anything like That's that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> love is typified. Earlier on, I said, uh, in definition of love, um, we can understand love to an extent. Mm. We can we can see it and understand it to an extent. And it, it's just good that she touched on that attributes of love. So if you define love according to dictionary, then you won't be able to see the attributes of love. So how do we see love? How do we characterize it? How do we show it? We have to go back there. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not proud. Love is not selfish. Right. Love bears long. It oh, suffers right. long. And all okay, of those I, I, I would like to hold you there so we could actually go to the practical mm -hmm. aspects, really. Yeah, right. So we're going to be narrow it down to your, um, to you as a father, to you as a mother. Mm -hmm. How can love really reflect in the home? and also at, at positions of power, really. Because we see a divorce rate is increasing. We recorded that 2021, and during the period of COVID-19, a thousand cases of divorce. People could not just wait for the pandemic to be over. They were literally doing divorce cases, settling divorce cases online to show you how a lot of who have really left that place. So how can really, really practical, how can love be shown and reflected in the home? I'll start with you, Rev. Yeah, so uh, As I a mean, father. For, for time, mm -hmm. honestly, you want to talk about that you must understand what is um influencing that that um divorce rate why is this thing becoming rampant you know then we must understand that there is a culture that is antithetical to the culture of this kingdom right. which is um hinge on postmodernism that um seems to exalt self right. so it doesn't matter what you feel if it's good for me that is it so mm -hmm. people are becoming insatiably selfish which is the markers of the end times that people will love themselves rather than the things of god lovers of pleasure now at the at the wheel of this divorce rate is that understanding and that's why we must recreate uh, not recreate that's why we must perpetuate this culture of love as given to us by the king in well, this right, kingdom. We, we have this popular, it's different for mothers. You know the mothers are naturally emotional, you know. Children always want to their mothers. Fathers are being, you know, feared, you know, <laughs> and all. But we don't really see, especially in African homes, you know, I don't even say African, I feel it's general, but mostly in African <laughs> homes, you know. It, it's father is coming, they turn off the TV, they go to run and all. How can fatherly love be really reflected in the home? That he's not feared. LC, you've got to talk. I, no, you, you have to I talk as a father. So, 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 I hope you know I have a dual identity. All right, I'm sorry we have to take a short break here. When we come back, we'll go back to our discussion. Don't go nowhere. Having a blessed time in God's presence. Why not join us at the God Life Assembly International, where God is committed to raising a pure breed. Welcome to this word, worship, and love house. It is located at the heart of the city behind Moneco Plaza, Yingi River Road. With churches in various cities in Nigeria, join us live or online via MixLRO, Facebook, and YouTube for any of our live transforming services on Sundays by 8.45 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays by 4.30 p.m., and Fridays by 4 p.m. As God ministers to us through our founder and senior pastor, Pastor Chintok Ishako, and other anointed ministers of God. Welcome to Church Unusual. You got it!
Have you ever thought of being a filmmaker? That thought's about to come alive. Unveiled is unveiling a production house of presenters and actors. Cinematographers and editors. Scriptwriters, producers and directors. Sound and light engineer. Makeup artists and costumers. The stage is set. Auditions will begin on the 18th to 19th of March 2022 at the God Life Assembly, Yingi Griffin. To register, send name and number to 080-826-55329. So join our team. Thank you so much for keeping your dials locked to the whole truth. So we've been um, talking with Pastor Elsie Adum and Reverend Ishai Noah on the Kingdom Kind of Love. And before we went on that short break, Reverend Ishai, you were talking about your idea on the Kingdom Culture. Uh, yes, I'm an African resident in Nigeria, but I'm a citizen of the Kingdom. Yes, I'm sir. a saint. So we want to get that Kingdom fatherhood. Yeah, so in the home, um, I, I love my child by giving and my wife by giving by care, by providing, irrespective of what they do. I show patience, I show kindness, right. I show forgiveness, I show long-suffering, I bear long, even when a child is being heady, I, I try to bear for long, praying for him, right. and believing that he will change and come to appropriate these values of the kingdom so that it becomes his culture and eventually his worldview. That's how we can perpetuate this and then the church can become strong and vibrant. Yes, yes I am an African, uh, but I don't subscribe to the law that Africans perpetuate. There are many things that are good in African culture. We redeem them and we use them, but yes, the things that do not um, depict this kingdom, ethos mm -hmm. of this kingdom, we throw them away because we are new, cre I am a new creation in Christ. So that was the reason why I was laughing. <laughs> yes, I am an African, but come to my house. Huh. I am not saying things that I don't do. Mm -hmm. Come to my house and you will see that as a father. I love my children. I love my wife and everyone that is in my home. And I do everything under God. By the way, whatever I do, the energy with which I do it is supplied by the grace of That's God. Right. Because it is God who is at work in me, giving me the power and the ability to obey Him. If He says, love one another, I love my wife, I love my children, irrespective of what they do or mm. where they go or how they respond to me. So in other words, you're saying that we can't love on our own. You, you literally have to be enabled by God. To an extent, yes. There is a way you can show love. But there is a way that you have to be empowered to show love because of our humanity. So here is what works. Um, we know God truly, but we don't know him exhaustively. So also it is that we don't know any of his attributes completely. So if we pick an attribute of love, for instance, while you are angry with the person who raped that girl and he, uh, he ripped that woman's tummy and destroyed the fetus, while you are angry and you are feeling like, I, want, I will kill that person, God has forgiven him. So I don't understand what kind of love is that because the love of God is deep, is wide, deep. is you, you understand. Again. So it's, it's a big, big, big. All right, Pastor Elsie, please oh, walk us oh, through your journey. I don't know how soft or how sweet or how emotional or how turbulent <laughs> it is, but we'll just walk us through your journey of being practical in loving. Um, like Rev said, the demands of love, the culture of love, um, I would say is not feminine or masculine okay. first things first I like all right that. it's okay. kingdom this is how we are in this kingdom we are patient we are kind we suffer long uh, we don't take account of wrong done to us that's what is expected like he said but the the you have the dual sides of you where there's the one that you know like scripture would say what i will to do i you know i, I find myself i'm not doing it as a wife and as a mom as I'm looking into 1 Corinthians 13, my roles are even more for me, but they're not burdensome because it's kingdom. Jesus said to us, um, what I'm giving you is not going to yoke you. It's not, it's not burdensome. It's light. Mm -hmm. Okay? I, I really want to stop you here because I feel that this is a highlight for many people. It's not burdensome. It's not burdensome. Because people are really bearing it. Yes, they actually think... Going to our home, Marie what do you Gerard, mean? Gerard, exactly. Gerard. They tell you, just take everything. But because they are looking at it through the lens of culture, yeah. that is not kingdom. Yeah. Culture okay? Is not kingdom. Is not kingdom. Okay. All right? Now, if you, if you accept that 
for example, you, have you found, have you met people who say, this is me, just accept me like this? Okay. Why should we accept you like that? Why are you like that? Because you've accepted yourself like this, like, okay, this is me. Why not accept what God says you are and who God says you are? You are love. Accept it. And when the wrong sides, the wrong interpretation of love comes to you, I say, no, that's not me. That's alien to me. As a mom and as a wife, um, I'm here upholding my children by what I received from my husband, submitted to him. Because this is my, this is my definition and my understanding of marriage. Um, no two marriages are the same. Like a full fingerprint. Yeah. Yeah. You can get guidelines. You know, everybody, we all have hands, don't we? We all have fingers, yeah. some of us, you know, I mean, except for maybe accidents or birth def uh, de defections, yeah. there, right? Yeah. Um, marriage is, is to me like a fingerprint. I have my culture in my home, but the general, the foundation of my home is the scripture. All right. So the Bible says, submit, wife, submit. Most women don't want to hear that thing. Don't even go near submission. They don't want to hear it. <laughs> so I'm submitting to my husband in love and I'm submitting to my children in love because what my children see me do with my husband, they pick up. The way my husband responds to me, the children pick up. So I ensure that my children are fed the right thing. Now, for example, let's say my husband um, at some point goes off the mark. All right, he's not being Christ anymore. He's heady. He's doing this. He's doing that. It behoves me to leave out First Corinthians thirteen before that man to win him back. Is what Scripture says. Scripture says you as a wife, when you you know you mm -hmm. your your behavior, the way you carry out God in that can redeem your husband, yeah. can redeem your children. Yeah. So mine is dual. While he's looking onto Christ and redeeming me, I'm doing the same for him, and then the children are following us. Mm -hmm. All right, um, this, this, this word I picked from what Pastor, Pastor Chief Dr. Shako said mm -hmm. during, because we've been taking on the culture for, for right. weeks now. And he says, love is service. That's you right. have to be humble and intentional. That's mm -hmm. right. And so talking about um, love in place of authority, mm -hmm. how can we um, bring out love in place of authority, not self-seeking, not trying to, you know, you know, a lot of people who just want to be out there, not because they have love for or want to serve. So how can we find that balance and love for service? By the way, my pastor made a famous quote, a statement that I took as a quote, mm -hmm. when he says the compromise of one generation becomes the culture of the next okay. generation. Right. Wow. That there are ways we do things. Remember I said that culture is things, some things we value. That's right. And we do it and over time others take it and it becomes their culture. Right. And it's difficult to change them. You can look at dress. You can look at um, corruption. Yeah. You can look at different things. Yeah. How they are so uh, pervasive today uh, is because someone started it somewhere. Right. And we need to reverse that. That's right. uh, yeah, but uh, talking about love as service, and I have listened to that keenly. Um, you who desires to serve, you must know the reason why we serve. And kingdom has given us a blueprint. Jesus has given us a blueprint for service. That's right. he, he brought a revolution. He says, uh, the loss of the Gentiles do it this way, but for you, uh, it should be this way. Uh, and he demonstrated that by taking a tower. And he said, have I not been amongst you as the leader, but I'm the one who served? Go and do likewise. So anyone who is going into service must first and foremost know that uh, service is to take a lowly position, not to load over people, which means that you show by example. You don't only say you show by example, and that has to be done. And, and, and for um, people in place of authority, now you are serving, you must understand that uh, uh, there is one to whom we give account right. of how we serve or the motive of our service. Right. That is the reason why I, we began by saying that uh, this is kingdom culture of love. Right. It is a kingdom. Kingdom has a king over it, and it has ethos. So if you do anything that violates the ethos of the kingdom, the king is there to judge, right? Uh, so when you come to the place of service, you serve as prescribed. Now mm -hmm. let me say this, um, that, that culture is derived from the scripture. For the Bible, for the Christian. So whether it is at family level, I understand mm -hmm. that the outlook of it might vary from one family to another, but it must be rooted in the scripture. Right. The way you are doing this, is it biblically correct? You understand? If it is not biblically correct, you throw it away. That's right. uh, so that's how it goes. Okay, do you want to say something about uh, Basically, um, concerning authority, like Rev said, listen, 
Authority is not authority until it is rooted and grounded in Christ. If not, it becomes, it has a tendency and probably will tilt towards tyranny. Um, you have people, you have abuse of authority, you have abuse of power. Um, what is authority without balance, without Christ? What is authority without a mind that is set correctly? rooted and grounded in love. There's that attribute of love that says um, it does not rejoice at iniquity, but rejoices when right and truth prevails. For me, that is the bedrock of authority. So why is service a measure of love? When right and truth prevails, where you're giving more than, you're giving um, more than is expected of you. You're giving even when it's not expected of you. It's a life that is, is a continuous giving. It's a life that wants to win over. You're giving with, with, with a rede redemption in mind. Oh. That's service. Yeah. And that's that's service. Yeah. You're giving service with mm -hmm. a redemption. redemption. You're not yeah. doing, it's yeah. not servitude that, is, that says you're beneath someone. No, you're yeah. giving service to redeem. Okay, uh, I feel there's a point where people who have really missed it, like you talked about family and what you learn, we watch, submit from, from your husband and your children pick it. We know that not all homes are functional. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have mm -hmm. gotten a lot of things mm -hmm. and they have missed it. They're way far from the kingdom culture mm -hmm. and they're asking themselves, listening right now, watching, um, how can I find, come back to the kingdom culture? How can I really be all that and more? Let me speak from a wife's point of view. I've talked with a lot of women and half the time you just hear pride speaking. Um, if you can deal with the pride issue, male, female, if you can deal with the pride issue, it will be a lot more easier to return and say, okay, this has not worked for our home. Let's discard of it. Oh. If a wife and a husband can sit and say face to face and say, okay, listen, ego apart, um, I'm not feeling like maybe I'm feeling cheated because most women feel as if they're cheated, you know, in, in their marriages. Um, but all of it are, are, are things that come from the place of pride, me, myself, and I. Oh. Self-consciousness. What about me? What about me? What about mine? Uh, you are always, what about me? If we can discard all of that, there is hope. There is room for seeing that there's a need, there's a vacuum, there's a gap in this marriage that wants... That, that calls for attention. If you can get women to, let me speak to the woman now, if you can get so many women to just accept that mm -hmm. you need help, first things first. Some people are crying on the inside knowing that they need help, but they will never cry out yeah. because they don't want to be seen less. Yeah. They don't want to be seen like, um, you know, you've been defeated. Yeah. You know, that you, feeling, failed. you yeah. failed. Uh -huh. you, you, you didn't show the man, you didn't show them. No, no, there's nothing to show. Return to your first love. Already, to Re Rev, I really don't want to talk about. I really, because I feel that <laughs> the single ones like us who are being left out because yeah, even though we're looking forward yeah. to marriage in the long run, but as a single person who has a distorted perception of love, how how do we correct it? We see ladies who just you know any any the one who just says I love you is is all right oh, wow. by them and and it's, it's really breaking the society. Yeah, it's breaking the society, unfortunately, and uh, the society is being broken. Mm -hmm. um, and people are hurting, and you know, yeah. people are even despairing and giving up uh, of, of on life. But here's my take on it: to correct that is to return home, that's right. is to come back to the basics, and that's scripture. What is God's prescription? What is God saying concerning love? Now. Can you submit to the authority of the scripture? Mm -hmm. Because that is where the whole ball game is. Yeah. When you see people parading themselves and are seeking to go their own way and to do things the way they want to, you want to ask yourself, do they submit to the authority of the scripture? Mm -hmm. And again, I take us back to saying, if you are that kind of person who will, will not submit to the authority of the scripture, then there is probably nothing that can be done. Hmm. The world will continue to be the world, but the church will have to perpetuate this culture so that people are redeemed. Otherwise, um, there would be trouble everywhere. Let me, um, let me, let me say okay. this. If I was to talk to a single person who feels like this isn't working, from what we're seeing, this isn't working, and um, they don't know how to... What I, would, what I would say to them is, 
do you want to be loved by God? Usually the answer is yes. Yeah. I want to be. That's do you know God as your father? Now, whether you know it or not, he already loves you. Not loved you. He already loves you. God is head over heels in love with you. Will you accept that? It starts a healing for any single person who feels, okay, this isn't working. I don't like the pattern of love that I'm seeing. I don't like what I've seen so far. Mm -hmm. If you would respond to the love of a father, the healing starts. That brings me yeah. to ask you this question, Pastor Elsie. Why should one choose the kingdom love culture? Why? Believe it or not, see, there's a spirit in man, every man, that is the spirit of the Lord, that is the spirit of God. Because nobody was born by themselves or by a strange spirit, whether good or bad, they were born by God. And God is love. So there's that love factor in every man. I don't care if he's termed the worst person on earth. There is a cry of everyone to be loved and accepted. There's that cry on everyone. It only makes for your life to respond to the life that gave it life. Okay, a, a, a church father called Augustine says that our creatureliness will co continually be restless until it finds its rest That's in right. God. Can you say that again, sir? Our creatureliness will continue to be restless until it finds its rest in God. Mm -hmm. Whenever you see people trying to express, looking for love here or there, they are trying to fill a gap that That's God right. has put there because he created them. And the only uh, thing that can fill that vacuum is God himself. That's right. So if you go to a wrong source, and, and by the way, whether you are an atheist, whether you are a humanist, whoever, whatever your belief system is, you must know that God created the heavens and the earth, including you, That's right. and he has willed his laws over the earth. Irrespective of who, who you are and where you are, his laws will catch up with you. That's right. I can take one, for instance, law of gravity in science. Uh, you drive your car at 160 and you're negotiating a bend, the car will throw you off, whether you are rich or poor, atheist or Christian or Muslim. <laughs> Do you understand? Because yeah. the law of gravity will catch up with you. That law is put there by God. And so when you hear people seeking expressions outside of God, you have compassion on them. You pray for them. And um, you engage them. Hopefully they will find, because they are in search. Mm -hmm. They are looking for something. That's the reason why we need to create this culture yeah, so that people right. like that can see it and make find their way back home right. and sometimes really it's, a, it's, an, it's a response to our importance because yeah. we have not been able to perpetuate this culture of love sufficiently yeah. for people to see and make informed decisions. I'm really happy the way you touched on compassion for people who are looking, who are lost mm -hmm. and really looking for love. Mm -hmm. Well, because we see how a lot of Christians or a lot of people get to disregard people because they really don't look like it yet. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, I really want you to touch on compassion and how we react to people who seem mm -hmm. lost. It's mm -hmm. amazing how mm -hmm. we walk by our physical eyes mm -hmm. than our, the eyes of our heart which is what Jesus, you know, would have us do. Um, if, you look on to, if you look on the outward of things and they don't appeal to you, you're not necessarily going to be moved. But if you move with the heart of Christ, wherein he saw us in our state and would rather not... Jesus didn't have any business coming. He would have just stayed in heaven and enjoyed himself and like, okay, they don't want us. We can stay here and do without them. But the love that he had had a lot of compassion he didn't want us he still doesn't want us broke sick or sickly he was moved with compassion this is my creation these are my creatures i want them and this should be our response to that's it. right mm -hmm. we have the life of christ in us should be the same thing the way he feels we should be that sensitive jesus wants the whole world redeemed to the father should be the same call in our hearts the same cry in our hearts all right, so well, uh, because you have to say something. Yeah, right? yeah, that compassion is a big thing for me, and uh, we Christians, believers, need to understand this and reach out to a world that is hurting. That's right. You know, a Levite saw a man who was beaten mm. on a highway to Jericho. Mm. A priest saw him. It, not, it was a good Samaritan that came. Now, whenever you see people responding, we might criticize them, we might condemn them, but that is not redeeming. That is not redemptive. What we need is to show compassion. Right. People are sincerely looking for God. Right. We show compassion to them, which springs out of love. And people will find their way home. And then we will make the world a better place. Okay, this is my final question yeah. to both of you. And I feel like I should start with you, Pastor Elsie. Okay. Uh, in all this and more, I've talked about 
um, how does the kingdom love culture benefit the world? How does benefit How does the world? benefit the world? Have Why should the world have take you, the Have you heard it? <laughs> it will be, um, oh my gosh, I, I almost said, you know how they finish um, um, fairy tale yeah. books and they leave happy, happy ever. ever. <laughs> <laughs> that is the desire of the Father. Hmm. That we all be redeemed, that every man be saved, that no one be destroyed. Anything outside the culture of love is tilted towards destruction. And that's not what God wants. Okay. This is why we should all strive towards that culture. The culture. Striving towards the culture of love, kingdom culture of love, is striving towards the life of God, the life of Christ. All right. That's right. Yes, Rev. That kingdom culture creates a cosmic harmony. It makes us to, re, to it will make us to recover our, um, c uh, civility. So you see a lot of killings on this on our streets. You see a lot of vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. You go to our communities. You see many people impoverished. It's because there is no love. Love is what heals the world. That's right. And so the world will benefit from this love culture when it is demonstrated, mm -hmm. and we've got to do that. Um, have you gone to your to 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 a local a, an environment and you see many young people, you know, doing drugs and all of yeah. these things? We will want to c condemn them, you, you know, and judge them. Mm. But Jesus won't do that. No, won't. Jesus will have compassion right. of, 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 upon them, over them. Jesus will want to see them redeemed. Do you understand? By the way, have you ever thought that those were Jesus on our streets? Because Jesus said, when I was hungry, you did not mm. visit me. When I was in prison, you did not, uh, you know, all of those things. And they said, but where did we see you? Yeah. And he said, for as long as you did not do it to these little ones, you haven't done it to me. So the next time you see these kind of people, you know that these are Jesus is on our streets. They deserve love. They deserve, deserve compassion. Right. And we've got to reach out to them. That's why the kingdom culture All right. is it important. Has, it has been a very swell time. I, I feel we could keep going on and on and on. The time is usually not a friend. But the consolation that we can have you again on the show, really. <laughs> that is the consolation. Really, thank you so much. We've been on the show with Pastor Elsie Adim and also Reverend Ishaya Inoa. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. Thank you, thank thank you so much for having This is still the whole truth. There's still more coming. We'll take a quote of the week. And when we come back. It continues, don't go nowhere. With all that I said and more, if you need prayers or counseling, we would like to talk and pray with you. Please call the number 090-39515-660, 090-39515-660. Or for more inquiries, please follow the number displayed on your screen. But before I leave you, it's really important you do not forget, true love is real, and true love is a kingdom love culture, God's kind of love. And your choice for kingdom love is your escape from every form of destruction. Kingdom love culture is the best choice. Talking about love, I'll leave you with this song done by, written by Pastor Amos Obadiah and sang by Pastor Tinto Kishako. Until I come your way another time, I remain your straight, precious and easy. Bye for now. I'm the one you love, leaning on your breast. I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one you love, leaning on your breast. I'm the one, I'm the one, ah, I'm the one.
I'm the one.